Hey there, it's Zach. Thanks for joining me again. I've got another Max for Live device that I wanted to show you today. Okay, so we all know what a crossfader is, right? You've got two audio signals and you want to fade smoothly between them. Uh, but what if you have 12 audio signals or five audio signals? What do you do then? Uh, well, that's where this device called Chiastic Slide comes in. And yeah, the title, I, I'm a big Autechre fan. Okay, so what we've got is a group track. So, so we've got five different instruments here, all grouped together. We've got a piano. We've got a 12 string guitar. We've got a bass horn. That's fun. We've got a saxophone-ish. And we've got another uh, guitar, but with some chorus, I guess, or something like that. I just picked five instruments at random. If we listen to them all at the same time, it sounds like this. Yeah, no thanks. But hey, what if we could kind of fade around and fade between them? So that's where a chiastic slide comes in. So let's just add it to our set. So I've added it to the group track and we see uh, that group track has five uh, child tracks uh, and here we have five different colored balls uh, in the chiastic slide and each ball is representing sound from one of these sources. So let's just go ahead and play this again and see how it sounds. Right now we're only hearing the piano and, and here you can see from the visualization we're pointed at the piano. The piano is the purple one. If I change the direction, we can fade between the piano and the guitar. But maybe we want to fade, kind of bring them a little bit more together. And so we can fade between these different sources. Now this can get fun if, let's say, we add an LFO to automate that direction parameter. With that, now we can kind of have a reverse Leslie speaker effect here. So I'm going to change the waveform to a up sawtooth, uh, go to remote mapping mode, map this to the direction, and you can see as this signal ramps up, uh, it's effectively ramping up the direction until it drops back down to zero at zero. And if we look over at the mixer, here we can see how chiastic slide works. What it's doing is it's modulating the mixer volume on each track uh, according to a little bit of math of like where this is pointed and what it's pointing at. So let's listen to this here again. Okay, that's kind of fun. We can speed it up or slow it way down. But then we also have control over the pickup pattern of this virtual microphone that we have spinning around here. So we can make it wider to include more sounds and also this kind of abstract concept of curve. So at a low curve, uh, we effectively get uh, full volume uh, for the width. At the full curve, we just are back to a tiny pinpoint of pickup pattern here. And so we can uh, we can have fun with this by maybe slowing it down, changing the waveform to glider. Maybe increase the width, keep a normal curve. So maybe you can think of some things to do with that. Okay, so the next demo I wanted to give was the other context in which you can use the chiastic slide, which is on a rack. And in this case, I've got an instrument, an, uh, an analog synth instrument going into an audio effect rack, and I've got six different effects chains defined in that effect rack. So let's listen to this uh, without any effects. Okay, that'll drive somebody nuts. Now, if we turn on the audio effect rack and let's just hear how that goes. Okay, it's very loud because we have six different chains all at full volume here. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is add the chiastic slide after the rack. Uh, it has picked up that there are six, uh, six chains in the rack preceding it. Uh, and it's picked up their colors. And so I can even do things like, oh, I want this to actually be a bright red. 
and this one to be a lavender, whatever. Uh, and it tracks that. And I can also change the order, maybe put the lavender right after the red. And then here it is reordered here. So what we can do now is uh, right now we're pointed at the red one. And so if we play this again, we're going to hear just this delay effect, but we can change to this effect or this effect or this one or this one and kind of do similar things with automating, uh, let's say, uh, the uh, direction with a sign. So we're going to sweep back and forth. Why not? Let's slow that down. And then maybe we can use a different LFO to uh, modulate the width parameter. Anyhow, we can see how a chiastic slide is working with the rack. Similar to how it was doing with group tracks, it's modulating the, uh, the chain volume, in this case, of the rack. So I've shown it here in the context of an audio effect rack, but it, can, it would also work the same if you put it after an instrument rack. So you could have a stack of instruments fade between them, and it would work just like it did in this group track context. So that's chiastic slide. Let me know what you do with it. Uh, let me know what ideas you've got to think of or uh, how to improve it, how to make it better or other device ideas you might have. Let's talk about it. Cool. Have a good one. Take care. Bye.